There's a lot of talk about what connects us to each other, as a people, as a country, as a planet. Some say it's our common beliefs or the inherent kindness of humanity, yada, yada, yada. Wrong. What really connects us is something far less lofty, more down to earth, actually ground level. What connects us? Roads. Today, no matter where you want to go, there's usually a road that can get you there. But that wasn't always the case. It took innovations in travel technology to turn old dirt roads into super highways. The Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation's Matt Anderson explained how America came to pave and map over 2.6 million miles of roadways. What kind of roads did the earliest automobiles ride on? Well, if you were an early driver, you really had just two choices outside of the city, either bad roads or no roads at all. There were very few roads outside the main cities, and those that did exist, a lot of them were just dirt. And what were the bad roads like? They were pretty terrible even in the best of weather. They would be rutted, bumpy, but after it rained, they would be an almost impassable kind of gumbo mix. When did better dirt roads and paved roads come in? We'd actually experimented with improved roads as early as about 1820 with the National Road, which was the government's first kind of step in the direction of building roads. But of course, all of that was kind of sidetracked when the railroad came on the scene. It wasn't until the advent of bicycles and the bicycle craze of the 1890s that focus on road services came back. How did the materials of these early roads begin changing? Uh, they get a lot more sophisticated. We move from rough wooden blocks, cobblestones, or rough stone to smoother concrete that we would recognize today. Did car technology and road technology sort of develop in tandem? Yeah, they absolutely affected one another. As the roads get better, the cars start to sit lower toward the ground, and the tires, of course, get a little wider. So they're very much related. So then a whole road system is free to build up. Yeah, we start to build an actual comprehensive network of marked roads. We can take a look at a new surface up here. And may I ask, what's your preferred surface? <laughs> there are a few things as satisfying as uh, spinning your tires on a gravel road and leaving behind a cloud of dust. Yeah, oh, see, I like the black top. It's so smooth, and you can barely hear anything happening. <laughs> yeah, these are the kinds of roads I'm used to. Yeah, this is uh, something we'd recognize as modern. And these are the sort of road surfaces you would have seen by about 1921, when the federal government imposed the first numbered system of national highways. The first transcontinental road marked with signs to help guide drivers was the Lincoln Highway, built in 1913 and ran over 3,000 miles from New York City to San Francisco. Materials used to pave roads nearly a century ago, such as asphalt and concrete, are still used today. And asphalt is recyclable. You can tear it up, melt it down, and lay it down again. Why was it so important to President Eisenhower that there be an interstate highway system? Well, Eisenhower, of course, was a veteran of the US Army, so he was keen to improve roadways in the United States. And he also saw a defense value in these freeways. Not only could they help move military equipment in time of crisis, they could also help evacuate cities. Oh my goodness, so it's a national security measure. Yeah, absolutely. Formally, they are our national system of interstate and defense highways. He would be pretty upset to see the condition of some of the interstates now. <laughs> he would be a little frustrated by the traffic. That's yeah, the exactly. We, we've got to evacuate. Sorry, two-mile backup on I-95. Yeah. Wow, well, we could talk on and on about these roads. Yeah, we could. And you know, we've barely scratched the surface.